Welcome to another 10 minute review here in the channel. Today we have a piece by Quincy, Quincy Okolo and um, it's an acting piece and I think there's a few things that we can do better in order to actually get the most out of this acting. So without further ado, let's get to it and let's get talking about animation. All right, so here we are to, for another 10 minute review. My name is Harvey Newman. For those that don't know me, I like to share, in this case, some uh, tips and tricks on how to improve animation um, because animation is hard enough as it is. And especially when you're working on it by yourself, day in, day out. Sometimes you start spinning your wheels, animation blindness, all that bad stuff. So hopefully these videos help you guys to kind of like, you know, snap out of it a little bit and see things with fresh eyes. Now, for this week, we have an animation by Quincy. We have three files here. I'm going to start with the first one, which is the blocking. And I'm going to talk about the good stuff first and then the bad stuff after. So I'm going to set a timer on my phone uh, for 10 minutes and let's get started. All right, let's look at the video first, or the animation first, I should say. You, me or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. Nice one. You, me or nobody. Cool. So first and foremost, thanks Quincy for submitting the shots to our feedback channel on Discord. So um, I like the the fact that you're taking reference, right? Really important. And I also like how the way you're acting looks really nice. You, me or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. The way you blocked, even though it's good, I think it needs more detail, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tell you a little bit about the stuff that you should do because there's a, a couple of problems that I think that at the moment you're hitting and unless you overcome them, I think your animation is never going to be as good as possible. Very first problem is basically the reference, right? So even though you taking the step of reference is like absolutely amazing, it's kind of difficult for us animators to stay in front of the camera like I'm doing right now and talk normally and be relaxed. It takes you a lot of practice and a lot of being in, the, in front of the camera and acting silly in order for you to be like, this is just reference, right? In the beginning, you're very conscious. Um, and I know that I felt this way 100% because putting a lens in front of you and I'm right now I'm speaking to a lens um, and then having to act like yourself or like somebody else or whatever, it's weird. It's really weird and it never really stops being weird. You just overcome it in your mind a little bit and you go like, just relax, right? So I think one of the things that you're doing here, like obviously the audio is Sylvester Stallone, if I'm not mistaken, it, his voice is very distinct, very characteristic, but the way you're going about it on the reference is like almost like you're hitting certain beats, like you actually have you, me and nobody. Um, and then what does it say in the end? is gonna hit as hard as life, yeah. I, I think this is Rocky Balboa. So this this is actually like, you have about you, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. So you have about five beats or whatever that you have to hit. And the way you're actually going about it, you kind of like just hitting certain beats, which is cool. The problem is that just looking at the reference and you doing the movement, I don't feel like I'm getting what you're thinking about. I feel like at the moment you're thinking about what the body is doing more than what the character is thinking. And that differentiation is really important because I used to do this in the beginning a lot where you go, I hear an audio, I have an audio piece, I like it a lot. I know exactly what, what the character is going to do. It's gonna be like you, me, nobody, it's gonna hear our hardest life, but you're kind of missing what the character is thinking before, during, and after he says the line, right? So thinking about what is the situation that the character is saying it in, what is the state of mind that the character is saying it in, and what is the goal of the delivery of this line, right? So if you watch any movie, whenever they, obviously because you have actors and actors have, you know, a situation around them and they have a character to portray, they know more or less what the character should be doing, right? So if I am, um, I don't know, um, what's it? 
what's a high, iconic um, character that I'm thinking right now? A, the Godfather, right? So you are an Italian, you came from Sicily, you are actually trying to make it in New York, you actually thinking about the family, you think that you have it all in order, it's all in your shoulders for, for you to actually make sure that this works out. In your mind, you're doing a good deed even though you're actually doing bad for others. And it's all about the family, right? So you set yourself in this mindset and then you deliver the line with that mindset, right? And this is basically what I'm trying to convey here is that whenever you say you, me or nobody is going to actually hit as hard as life, like that line can be said by different people, can be said by Denzel Washington. It will be a very different delivery than it was Sylvester Stallone if he was, I don't know, uh, Martin Luther King saying it, let's say, it would be a very different delivery from, from, from Sylvester Stallone. So you have to make it your own in this case. This is the perfect time for you, especially if you're not working professionally, for you to make an animation your own. So you owning that animation and be like, I'm gonna make my own delivery of this line is what makes you stand out as an animator. Because then this line is going to look very different from anything that is out there and it's not going to be so f like plain right so think about all of those things and then deliver the line because that delivery is going to be very different your face expression is going to be very different and the way you move your body is going to be very different right um so do that first um and then basically you will start kind of like affecting the animation now the second problem that you have is basically not following the the reference too close, right? So I'm going to mute, yeah, I just muted it right here. And like at the moment, you're not following the reference super close. And the reason why is because you are missing keys in order to get that, those in-betweens and stuff. Like at the moment you have most of the golden poses, but you don't really have in between. So first step as always look at your animation and then define what are the storytelling poses which is going to be your golden poses the main poses in your animation the second step finding your in-betweens how does the animation goes from here to here in a convincing way right that's basically what you're looking for when it comes to like in-betweens right um getting from this pose to that pose in an interesting way so this is basically what you don't have here at the moment you have one pose here for example right when you hits it but the pose is different from yours if you think about it like the shoulders are slightly different the way he points the finger or the way you point the finger is different here it feels much more like this you are pointing the finger much more at the screen and then what you need to pose as well at, at least at the very very basic is the face with the body i like to do that because it allows you to at least have the main pops of the face and the mouth as you are talking so it helps you to define the character and then notice how this hand here is much closer to your face than it is here right so it makes it much more dynamic um, your elbow is slightly closer to your to your body here right um, so those things make a difference um, same thing here whenever you go you that is super important for you to actually make sure that it's the same thing right um, and any fast movement requires more keys than slower movement so especially when you go like this and you point really fast, make sure that you have at least one or two keys to make sure that you are signify the timing of the animation. And then here in the beginning, you have one pose to go from here to this, right? But in your, in your uh, reference, you have about like, you should have had at least about two or three keys here for anticipation. You have the anticipation here, see that? And then arm up around here, that's just gonna be another key right there. And then point, right? If you can, and this is a top tip, um, if you have a camera that can do 60 frames per second, change the setting to 60 frames per second because you get less blur like right here, right? This is most likely at 24 frames per second, which normally if you actually move your, car your hand really quickly, you see blur, which blur doesn't help any animator because you need to see how the hand is breaking down, what the fingers are doing and things. But in your case, you just see like strobing, right? You just see like two images. Um, so um, definitely get a, f a faster frame rate in your camera if you can. And then more frames here, right? Um, also, uh, one thing that is massive in your animation that is missing is basically what the hips are doing. So the way I would start this shot uh, when I'm actually blocking it, before I do anything with the body or anything with the hands or anything with the mouth or face or whatever, 
I'm thinking about what are the hips. So if you actually have the body here, the hips will naturally be around here. So what are the hips doing in this animation? How are they swaying? How are they moving, right? So whenever you have a pose like right here, so let's say you put a frame here, you can see or I can see that he's stepping or you are stepping forward a little bit and then you're delivering the line, right? At the moment, this animation doesn't feel like he's stepping very much at all. And there's no sense of cadence forward whenever he does it. For you, you're almost doing this and then you moving the body up like this, right? Uh, it's not big, it's subtle, but it helps you a ton. So moving the hips forward, definitely one of the things. And then you kind of stop here and notice how when you're pointing, you are actually moving your body as well. Like your body shakes with the pointing, right? And your hips as well. So get that shaking on the hips first right there especially if you play it at real time, you'll see. You see, yes, there's a little bit of a bounce as you're actually pointing. So those things are really important for you to kind of like capture in your in your blocking. And then you also have a hip sway right there whenever you move from side to side, right? When you say me, that actually, that's, that's really important. But hopefully you start to see where I'm going with this, right? Start with the hips every single time. Even if you don't see them, you can actually at least gather more or less what the body is doing. When you get that sway on the hips, then start working your way up until you get to that arm when you actually start you and me and all this other things. So this is the most important bit. Get the details within your blocking and also make sure that you capture as much of your blocking as possible. But ideally, go back to your reference and think about what the character is doing because the entertainment comes from how you deliver a line, right? So if you deliver the line like this, like you're doing right now, comes up as very static and very kind of like, you know, unemotional. But if you actually add some swag to it, if you actually add some acting to it, you'll start seeing that it just kind of like ups your animation to another level, right? And that's it. I hope it was useful, Quincy. Um, this it has a lot of potential, so keep, keep doing it, keep working on it. It's always tough to actually get started in animation and it's always tough to get reference right in the beginning. So you need to practice, practice, practice until eventually clicks and then you're off to the races. Yeah, that's all I had, guys. I hope it was useful to all of you. If you was, consider subscribing, liking and dropping a comment. And most importantly, thanks a lot for all my Patreon support and my channel here every single month which I highly appreciate. Also, if you want to actually get your shot reviewed just like Quincy got here, we have a feedback channel and everybody's adding feedback. Not only myself, other professionals in the server are also adding feedback. So you get the best of both worlds because the best way for you to learn faster is by asking feedback. And so you don't actually get your wheel spinning really quick and stuck in your mindset or getting animation blindness. That's all I had. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And until next week, stay well, stay safe. Peace.